So on the left side of the screen, I have Call Linux running, and I can enter RF config, and we can see the IP address as 192.168.1.19. And on the right side of the screen, I have Metasploit Tool 2 running, and I can enter RF config, and we see the IP address as 192.168.1.17. And of course, the Metasploit 2 is going to be running as the victim machine. And on the left side of the screen, we have Call Linux running as the attacking machine. So we're going to look at using, you can do a ping sweep to see all your live hosts or machines within the enterprise network. And once we have discovered the attacking or, or the victim machine that we want to attack against, we can use the MMAP followed by 192.168.1.17 to, to look at all the list of services that are available within the victim's machine. So we can see on port 2049, we have NFS. So NFS is a network file system. And of course, we can identify by probing port 2049 directly. We're asking the port mapper for a list of services. So of course, we also require RPC info to identify the NFS and a show model to determine that we have to slash share on the root of the file system of the compromised system that is being exported. So we will need RPC bind as well as NFS common packages to follow along. So we enter RPC info dash P192.168.1.17. So of course, we can see all the information regarding NFS within the list over here. So of course you can enter, you can open up another terminal, you can enter man RPC info. So this will actually give you more information about the tool that you're running. So the RPC info makes a remote procedure call to a remote procedure call server and reports what it finds. So this is pretty much the P option that we specified, property pod map around host. And of course it lists down all the registered RPC programs that we can try to connect against. So moving forward, what we can what we can understand is we can also look at a show mount option dash e 192.168.1.17. So we see slash asterisk. So getting access to a system with a writable file system like this is very straightforward. So to do so, we will generate a new SSH key in our attacking system, mount the NFS export and add our key to root user accounts, authorize keys file. So we enter ssh-keygen. So it says enter the file in which to save the key. And you hit enter. Does you, do you want to overwrite? So I was trying out some of the different techniques as well, hacking methodologies into trying to penetrate into the victim machine. Of course, no passphrase. So now that we have the identification key that's been saved, the public key has been saved, we're able to push this information into the the mount information that we will be setting into temporary folder. So mkdrr slash 10, and we can enter metasploitable. So we create a temporary folder to mount this drive, mount dash t nfs 192.168.1017. And of course the file that we have created, the directory that we created. So it says rpc.statd is not running, but it's required for remote lo locking. So as I mentioned earlier, we need to actually start up the RPC bind so we can see status RPC bind is not running so we can enter service RPC bind start so we started RPC bind daemon so now we can mount the file properly so I can cd to tam cd to metasploitable2 I'm gonna enter ls and I can see all the list of files and folders directly from the root directory so going back to msf admin and metasploitable I can enter pwd so I'm actually as slash home mfs admin and i can enter ls-l so i can see a list of files and folders i have within this directory so i can cd to dot slash home msf admin and of course i can see all the same list of files and folders within this directory so of course the next thing we got to do is that now that we have created our ssh key we can actually push it over into the victim machine so that we can authenticate as a root user into the system so temporary metasploitable root dot ssh slash authorized keys so dot ssh is actually a hidden folder so we hit enter so this would actually push the or pump the information into the authorized keys file and with this we can pretty much unmount the use of this particular network file system so we can umal tam metasploitable. And of course, now we can enter ssh root at 192.168.1.17. So it says agent emitted failure to sign using the key. So what we can do is we can use ssh underscore authentication soc equals zero. ssh root at 192.168.1.17. 
So this pretty much gives us the root access, direct root access into the victim's machine by creating or generating the secure shell's public key or private key so that we can authenticate fully into the into the victim's machine using SSH.